Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. From the four corners of the world, the four corners of this room, the fight starts now! So close. Well, it's press conference day here from the wonderful Europa Hotel in Belfast. Big night of boxing action coming up on Saturday live on The Zone. Your main event is all about these two. Michael Conlon versus Jordan Gill, the get back. December the 2nd, the first time we've been in Belfast since 2017. Nick Condon. I've got something to prove again. Against Jordan Gill. I've got nothing to lose. I'm going to be public enemy number one. I believe I'll take him. I'm ready to go. It's going to be a good fight. This is going to be an instant sellout. Pressure's on. I'll run for him. Well, a very good afternoon, everybody. Fresh after a very special week in Dublin, we've headed north to Belfast for the final match from UK show of 2023. As Michael Conlon takes on Jordan Gill in your main event atop a great card this Saturday, live on the zone from the SSC Arena. I'm Jamie Ward, alongside me, as always, former IBF World Middleweight Champion, Darren Barker. Now, Darren, we were going to stand here, go through the card, go through the running order. But as you can see behind us, the fighters are ready, and so is promoter Eddie Hearn. So I think we'll just get today's press conference underway. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Belfast. Seven years since we've had a show in Belfast, a special place for special fight nights, of course. Previously, Ryan Burnett, who's here today, seen him floating around, former world champion, beat Lee Haskins here to win the title, then unified the division as well. Before that, of course, great nights with Carl Frampton. I remember as a kid running around the Ulster Hall watching Paul Silky Jones stop Damien Denny in a wild night. And this is a special place and so happy to be back here with Conlon Boxing and, of course, The Zone on an incredible run. Last Saturday in Dublin, we saw a historic night. Katie Taylor became a two-division undisputed world champion, probably one of the best atmospheres I've seen, and big wins for Irish fighters as well, this time back in Belfast as Mick Conlon looks to get back to winning ways. New weight division, new trainer against Jordan Gill, who has it all to win on Saturday night and land him a massive fight as well. I think top to bottom... One of the best cards we've put together this year. Four tremendous fights that we're going to talk about on this top table. And plenty of young talent as well joining us. A special night in Belfast ahead of a few special weeks. I mean, imagine a world where it was big fight after big fight after big fight in different cities around the world. Welcome to the world of Matrim and the Zone. Because when we leave Belfast after Dublin last week, we're in San Francisco next week. Where Devin Haney will look to become a two-division world champion against the reigning world champion, Regis Progre. Then we're off to Phoenix, of course, where Sonny Edwards will attempt to unify the division against Jesse Bam Rodriguez. And then the card of the year, the day of reckoning in Riyadh. Anthony Joshua will headline against Otto Wallin, Deontay Wilder against Joseph Parker, Dimitri Bivol, Jai Apatai, a huge night to round off what has been a stunning 2023. And we can't wait to show you what we've got planned for next year. But right here, right now, we're in Belfast this Saturday. We're going to talk to the gentleman below me as well. We're going to start with uh, a young man making his professional debut on the card. Laylee Butterjig. Laylee, welcome. Um, a massive night for you. We didn't expect your professional debut to come in Belfast, but a huge card and uh, ready to go in the moment of your career so far. Yeah, I'm ready to go, Eddie. Um, I've been in the gym for a long time now, waiting for this moment. So I'm grateful to be out end of the year and get the ball rolling. Um, a young man, of course, only 18 years of age, and, and an opportunity for you to start this apprenticeship. And it's all about experience for you, all about momentum as well. We know you won everything that could be won as an amateur, but, but a young man to be turning pro, you feel it's the right time? Yeah, definitely. It's the right time for me to turn pro because I won everything as an amateur. I had no interest in going into being a senior. Um, I wanted to just go learn, go train with the pros and just learn my trade in the professional game and work my way up. And top sparring as well for you in the, the iBox gym. Of course, Al Smith and Eddie Lamb, great training team behind you and, and speak very highly about your talents. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, we, we're a good team down there. We all work hard. Uh, Al Smith, a good trainer. He's been around a long time. Same as Eddie Lamb. And yeah, we're just ready to go. Well, the professional debut. Look out for Lely on Saturday night. Tremendous young talent, as is this man, Cameron Vong. I mean, I don't know how he's had been so active these last couple of weeks. Must be something to do with unbelievable performances, Cameron. Um, again, your third fight in what has been, what, five, six weeks, something like that. Very difficult getting you matched, everybody's seen. Your talent, of course, firstly in Sheffield, then in Newcastle, and now a big fight for you in Belfast. Yeah, um, I wanted to be active, and uh, that's what I've done. Three fights in the space of two months. Uh, it's unheard, unheard of, really, so I'm very humble and grateful to be in this spot, and massive thank you to you and Frank for uh, getting us this active. What have you learned so far? I know you're very assured, very confident as well, but so far, two fights in, in the programme, already finding your feet. Yeah, definitely. Um, I love being under the lights, under that pressure. Um, I feel I was born to do this job, so I just take it all in my stride, and Saturday night, I'm looking to put on a massive performance to end the year. Well, viewers, tune in to watch the one Cameron Vong on Saturday night. Talk about uh, all Irish fights on the card. Let's talk about Fergus Quinn against Jared Hughes. Fergus, welcome. Um, again, coming on before the bell, all-action fight. Going to kick off the night in style on Saturday and get these Irish fans screaming and shouting. Looking forward to this one against Jared. Adam, can I cry to you? Got the wrong one. Ru <laughs> cheers, that's that's yeah. chink cheers for the hey, Jared, if you Rudy want. Rudy <laughs> Well, we can maybe make Fergus as well if you're up for it after. Come on, man. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Ruin, welcome. You're ready for Jared Hughes on Saturday night. Thank you, Eddie, for the opportunity. I'm ready to showcase my talent. You ready, son? You ready? You ready? Boy, I'm ready, son. Let's go. Let's have it. Let's do it. You said it, son. Well, I'm glad it was you instead of Fergus, because uh, you know I, I don't know what uh, Fergus would have said to me. We were probably at the same weight anyway. Yeah. Jared, big opportunity for you as well. Yeah, massive opportunity. Um, I've trained really hard, and uh, I can't wait to put on a statement on Saturday night. Thank you, both boys. Look forward to the head-to-head -head between you. And Fergus, welcome, part of Condon Boxing, <laughs> of course. Thank you, Sean, as well. Um, lots been said about you. Again, sold a huge amount of tickets on Saturday. Going to be a cracking atmosphere. Yeah, it's going to be great. You know, there's a big crowd coming up from Blake, and, uh, you know, it's just glad to get the opportunity. You know, I'm an all-action fighter, and... I plan to be in exciting fights and Saturday night will be no different, so can't wait for it. Well, thanks to the boys down there. We moved to four championship fights up here. And as Sean, you were so helpful. We're going to start off with you on Saturday night, of course, against Sam Maxwell. Tremendous fight. Great opportunity for you as well. Again, you guys, everyone up here sold a huge amount of tickets. And this is a cracking fight between you and Sam Maxwell. Yeah, um, as many of us know, me and Sam were stable mates for around two years, maybe two and a half years. We've sparred hundreds of rounds and we know each other very well um, I know what Sam does well he knows what I do well and it's going to be a game of who can stop who from doing what they do best um, I believe I have a great boxing IQ and I believe I have a great fit, a great fight ahead um, judging from our spars you're paid to watch them trust me talk about this card for us a little bit as well on, on Saturday of course the four main fights up here as well your will be the first of those four as well but a tremendous fight card a lot of people you know very very well yeah I mean I've shared a camp with everyone at this table I think almost um, and the fight this is probably the best show Belfast has ever seen in terms of 50-50 fights and in terms of atmosphere on fight week in terms of social media in terms of everyone asking me stop me in the street it's really really the best card Belfast has ever seen um, and I just can't wait to be part of it. Finally, for you, one thing that I've noticed up at this top table is really it's must win for everybody. Yeah, on top table. Like, I'm talking about career ending, I'm talking about the opportunities for big fights. Same, exactly the same for you and Sam. Yeah, 100%. As it says before, here's one of the, um, someone in the interview, uh, Sam's trying to get his, his, uh, his career back on track with big fights. Um, all his fights, even though the ones he's lost, he's been very competitive. And, and, and I'm trying to break through into the big scene with the big names and, and get on more matchroom um, cards, you know. So um, for me and for everyone here at this table, we all stand in the same position. And we all, every fighter, has no advantage in terms of um, pressure because we all have it. We all must win. Well, over to Sam. Sam, I'm delighted to see you back because I thought you were fantastic against Dalton Smith. You took that fight. It was a, a big step up after a little bit of inactivity. I know you had the run out on our card. 
But I, I said to the team, we need to get you back in a big fight. You've got it here. Another massive opportunity for you in Belfast on Saturday. Yeah, definitely. I really appreciate you getting me back in the, at the top level. And um, yeah, I prepared well and I'm, I'm looking forward to this fight. Shared plenty of rounds before with Sean as well. You obviously like the fight. You, you believe it will be as competitive as he talks about. The spars were good fun as well. What are you expecting from the fight? Yeah, I know how good Sean is. And then, like you said, like he said it as well, um, the spars, you, you'd pay to watch them. And if that's anything to go by, it's going to be a great fight. And uh, yeah, just, just who's going to turn up on a day and get, get it right? Uh, that's who's going to win. And I'm going to make sure that's me, bring my A game. And finally, you, you're a stellar amateur. And, and I guess at one stage you were a prospect. But a couple of defeats at high level now takes the pressure off a little bit, but this moment in your career, like I said to Sean, must win for you on Saturday as well. Definitely, it's an important fight. Um, like, yeah, I have uh, took a few losses. My last fight was a big loss um, against Dalton, but I felt like I held myself well in the fight, so I know I've got the talent, I know I've got the ability to, to still push on again and reach the top. I don't think I'm, I'm finished. Um, there's loads left in me, and I'm looking forward to showing that on Saturday. Good. Well, cracking fight to kick off those big four fights. Sean McComb against Sam Maxwell. This, for me, is a, a fantastic fight. Keeping Ajarko against Troy Williamson. You know, it's a fight that we wanted to make for a while. Respect to both for stepping up. It's exactly the kind of fights that we want to see. You talk about big stars coming through in Belfast. Again, I talk about tickets. Keeping has sold bundles of tickets on Saturday night. We've been looking to put him in a big fight to establish himself as a headliner moving forward. But the man to my left, Troy Williamson, tough as old boots. I mean, I remember the fight back in which seems like a while ago now, against Ted Cheeseman, fight of the year when he knocked out Ted Cheeseman, who, who kind of finished his career that night, if you like, as well. But Troy, welcome. I mean, the one thing about you, Troy, is every name that we gave you, wherever it was, the answer was yes, yes, yes. Um, again, talk about must-win fights. Fantastic fight between you and Keevan on Saturday night. A must-win for you at the weekend. Definitely, yeah. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank yourself and Macho and Boxing for giving me the opportunity, but... Um, you made the wrong choice uh, calling my name out to fight Keevan because uh, I'm coming on Saturday night to give to give it me all and I'll be getting a win. I think when people talk about this fight, they know how tough you are. They know Keevan can stand and fight. He can box as well. Is the plan for you 10 rounds at a very, very fast pace in this fight to test out the durability, the heart of, of Keevan Ajarko? Is that how you see yourself winning the fight? That's, that, that's what I do. Um, I, set, I, set a, I set a high pace. Um, people underestimate my boxing ability, but I can box, and you're going to see that on Saturday night. Um, Kevin hasn't boxed at my level. He knows that. You know that. Everybody here knows that. So he keeps saying it's a big, it's a big step up for him, which it is. And uh, we're going to see how much he's got because he's going to be took to the well. And we're going to see if he can cope. And that's the plan. Take him to the well and try and stop him. You think, you think you'll think you break him down on Saturday night? I'm, but like you say, I'm, I'm, I've trained really hard. Uh, uh, I'm injury free for the first time in four or five years, which is a massive confidence boost. And um, I'm punching harder than ever, I'm stronger than ever, and I'm coming to, to put on the show Saturday night. Keevan, you've been after a big fight for a while, and Belfast, of course, like last time, you boxed in Dublin in front of 9,000 now, around 7,000 on Saturday in Belfast. Huge amount of tickets sold, exactly what you've been after, the, the platform, the moment for you on Saturday night. Yeah, it's been a dream to uh, box back in Belfast on a massive card. Um, I used to go to watch fights in the SSC, so to be fighting in the SSC in a massive fight back home, it's it's unbelievable for me. But that's yeah, Troy says it's a massive step up for me. But at the time of with him, it was a massive step up for him against Cheeseman. Do you know what I mean? Everyone has that one fight where they have to step up to the plate, and that's going to be Saturday night for Kevin Ajarko. But for best, this has been the best camp I've ever had, and I look forward to going out and putting on a Punch perfect performance. He talks about the ability that he has to box as well, but we all, we all know Troy Williamson is good on the front foot. He sets a great pace. He's very, very tough as well. Willing to do whatever it takes. Looking to mix it up on Saturday night. How do you win this fight? Just by being the best Keeman Jarko, which is what you'll see on Saturday night. I believe I'm better in every department. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Um, Troy's had a very tough career the last five years. He's been in wars, um, a lot of miles on the clock. And you, you take in the spawn and the accountability of that. So he only fights one way. And I'm prepared for the best Troy Williamson on the on Saturday night. And you'll see the best Keevan Jarko. And it's going to be fireworks. I know everyone says win by any means necessary. But when you visualise the fight, we know you're a sharp shooter. He's very aggressive. You see yourself taking him out inside the distance? Yeah, without doubt. I, I go into every fight believing I'll take anybody out. I know how hard I hit. Um, someone said on social media the other day, how long has he 
not stop someone. My last three fights have went 10 rounds because I had an injury and I couldn't capitalise on when I had people hurt. But injury free, best camp, fittest, strongest I've ever been. So Saturday night, if that opportunity presents itself, then. So, it sounds like you're copying what I said. Huh? It sounds like you're just saying what I said. It sounds like, I, like what you said? No, it's, well, it's what I'm saying. I don't want no, injury, no excuses from you Saturday night or the day after when I went or I had major surgery on my elbow. I, I, cut, I couldn't cut weight properly. I couldn't have just had a kid and whatever else. There is no excuses from me. I don't want no Listen, excuses. There's, there's no excuses. That's, you didn't want the fight. You've been forced into taking a okay. fight. Why is the fight happening then? You pick, you, it, was either, it was an ultimatum to you. You either took the fight or you're getting released. Eddie, is that right? You said that in an interview. You said it in an interview. If your fight is not willing to take 50 50 fights, you've got to let him go. Are you aiming at this kid? Uh, I mean, I feel like it was the right fight for him to take. He accepted it. But. So, so, there, so there we go. Keem and Jocko didn't turn no fight down. Let's get Except it straight. Let, otherwise, you wouldn't let, be let's, get, let's get it straight. I don't. In my career. Accepted it, otherwise, you were going to be. In, in my career, I want to go down a certain path. We asked for one fight. It doesn't really matter where we are well we're, we're, we're fighting on Saturday night, so no more talking. We didn't, get, we didn't get that fight. It just gave me more time to prepare, and that's why the fight's happening. I'm a fighter. I've never turned down a fight in my life, hence why this fight's happening. I look forward to Saturday night. I've prepared the best. A big shout-out to Holy Trinity Boxing Club because we've got three former Holy Trinity boxers on this show, and it's a credit to them. And finally, just one question for both of you. We talk about must-win. Troy? Defeat on Saturday night, your career's in, in a difficult position. I, I, I wouldn't say it's a must win because when I beat Keevan, he's a world year 25, he's still young, he's got, he's got plenty of years to come and he'll come again. Keevan, must win? Yeah, no, must win. Every fight's a must win for me. I, I never want to take a defeat, never ever. So, yeah, it's a must win for me, but I mean, I'm 27, by the way, I just turned 27 yesterday. I was expecting a happy birthday from you, Troy. Um, but yeah, I'm still young, 13 and 0. Um, Every fight is a must win, do you know what I mean? To progress to that next level, to become a world champion. I want to be the first black Irish world champion. So um, every fight is a must win for me. Um, but there's no pressure. I don't look at it as, oh, oh this is a career defining fight. This is just another scalp on my record to push on to the next level. Well, cannot wait. Keeping that Jarko against Troy Williamson. Cracking fight, as is this one. I saw these boys face off yesterday at the workout. Tyro McKenna against Lewis Crocker, the Battle of Belfast. Cannot wait. Again, talk about tickets, talk about atmosphere. This is going to be red hot on Saturday night. Lewis, I'll start with you. Welcome. Um, just a, a, an amazing time for Irish boxing you saw last week in Dublin and a big opportunity for all of the winners on Saturday night to move into massive fights in Ireland or around the world on our schedule. And you fancy your chances against this man on Saturday night? For sure. Um, I went against Tyrone, sets me up um, with huge opportunities, especially heading into next year. I have the platform at the zone, a Belfast fight, Belfast fight as well. This magnitude hasn't happened for years, so I'm excited. What are you expecting for, from this man? I mean, he's been around now a while, very, very tough, always in exciting fights. He's going to be bang up for it. We know that. Huge amounts of tickets sold by both of you as well. The atmosphere is going to be incredible. Expecting a tough night in the office? Of course. You know, Tyrone's a good fighter. Tough, uh, tough as old boots, as, as you say. Um, he's durable as well, and um, he's been around. He has the experience, like he always says. So I'm looking forward to putting on a show and finally get the opportunity to show everyone what I can do. Tyrone, welcome again. Tyrone. Cracking head-to-head -head last night. You yeah. never disappoint. Do you know what? It's very own characteristic, characteristic of, uh, of Lewis to get on like that. So I think he's feeling... Kind of the pressure and the nerves of the big fight week. It's his first time being on this big stage. Obviously, I'm well used to it. I've had massive fights. I've fought Pro Gray, Jack Carroll, the Moon, uh, Jose Felix, um, people like that. So I'm well used to this. This is, this is something I buzz off. Um, this is a game to me. I love this, this kind of fight week drama. Um, it's, it's something I feed on. Um, the, the buzz of Belfast City at the minute for this Belfast v Belfast fight. I think it's been 40 years since the last big, big uh, Belfast v Belfast fight. Hugh Russell, rest in peace, peace to Hugh. Um, he was the last one to have one. Um, so I'm just, it, the buzz in the city is crazy. Everywhere I go, barber shops down the street to shopping, they're talking about it. Pressure really on Lewis for this fight. Yeah. I mean, I know you, you've been in with all those big names, and I feel yeah. like in your career you've had some good wins. 
you've kind of been a bit unlucky that you've been thrown into those kind of fights at that, those moments in your career, but you've never turned a fight down. Experience going to play a big key on Saturday? I think massively. I think experience is the, the, the key thing I have here. Um, obviously, Lewis is unbeaten. He's 17. No, he's, he's had a, a great career so far, but essentially he hasn't really fought any, at any good level, at any high level. I think there's a lot of factors here with what's he going to react when he goes into a, a crowd of 7,000 a cell, more or less, stadium. Um, a, a fighter that's, that's not going to back down. A, a guy that, that's got hit by some of the hardest people, hardest punchers in the world. And, and, and laughed at them. Got up and laughed at them. Several times. Listen, I fought my last fights, the who's who of boxing. You fought the who the fuck's here of boxing. Yeah. Like, there's a complete difference here. Exactly. Talk and cheese, experienced, inexperienced. We don't know what you're like when you actually get stuck in with someone with a live opponent. You fought bums. You've knocked out ten I'm bums. I'm fighting another one on Saturday. Do you? See, you? You keep thinking that. You keep thinking that. You, you, you can tell you're nervous. Or the way you're acting is not the way you act. You actually... You, thought I was you normally act... Yesterday. You actually, you were actually know that class, so, yeah. Cool and calm and collect. That's the way you are. But you're, you're acting out of character. You're getting very animated and, and screaming on your face like an 11-year-old girl. I, mean, I, I had to take a pain. Usually you're a big talker. You said nothing yesterday. What? You're usually a big talker. You said nothing yesterday. In my head, it's going to be small. Look at this. I was, I was cringy what you done yesterday. It was embarrassing. <laughs> you let yourself down. Don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> One thing you've had for this fight is plenty of prep yep. as well. We know this has been happening a while. It's been a proper training camp. You feel but like you're in a different kind of condition. It's been a year and a half training camp. I've had two fights fall through the week before the fight. Um, but it's been a year and a half of learning. I've been in the gym constantly from the from the cousin fights that have, that have fell through. I've been in had the I wouldn't say it's inactivity the last year and a half of not had the fight, but I've had the fight camps and it's just been a week before the fight that the fights fell through. So I've had the good sparring. The, I've done the weight cuts. I've, I've I've trained hard. I've done a lot of learning with Pete Taylor, who's an unbelievable coach. Um, and I'm just hungry to get in there and have another war. Get in blood bath. You're going to see absolute fabrics on Saturday night. I know you always dig in and you're always prepared to do what it takes, but in this atmosphere, again, it's boring talking about tickets, but I've seen how many you've sold personally yep. for this fight. The atmosphere, you, you can't back down in this fight. I could have sold double as much as I sold, but I was away in Dublin and there was too much stress of, of that tickle sale, and you know how stressful tickle sale can be. Oh, thanks for that. <laughs> but uh, listen, I've done what I, what I had to do. I sold a lot of tickets for this fight. I have a lot of fan base coming. I thrive off the fans. I fight for the fans, I've always said it. I mean, I didn't need to take this fight. Um, I obviously was a bit ahead of, of Lewis, but once this fight was put to me, I said I can't turn it down. I'd be a hypocrite if it did turn it down. I always say I fight for the fans, and this is a fight that the fans are dying for. Uh, as you can see, the buzz about the city is all about this fight. And finally, to both of you, Saturday night, predictions. I mean, can you get this guy out of there? Or you 100%. have to wear him down over the Not distance? Not a chance. Not a chance. <laughs> Listen, no mass. He's going to quit. He's going to realise he's in too deep. He's going to like, geez, I didn't think Tyrone was going to be this active. Want hit me? The, he's going to hit me the hardest punches he can, and I'm going to be laughing at him coming forward. And he's going to go, fuck, I didn't you, expect You've that. had one fight at Wilder, you were piss poor a year and a half ago against Chris Jenkins, who's way past it. Uh -huh. We should have beat yeah, you. Yeah, Chris Jenkins would be due. You haven't had a fight. You haven't, like, where, where have you been spectacular? Where have you got this hype? Yeah, Where's the hype? Like, relevant talk now. I'm going to smash you inside. Exactly, so shut up. It's him See? talking to me, not you. <laughs> Button down. Button up, sorry. All right, good one. <laughs> Lewis, you're right to reply. He's got a good chin, this man. Can you get him out of there? Uh, absolutely. Supremely confident getting him out of there. Well, the Battle of Belfast, Saturday night. Cannot wait. Tyro McKenna against Lewis Crocker. And a massive fight for both men in the main event as Michael Conlon returns up at 130 pounds to fight this man, Jordan Gill. Seen him with some fantastic wins in some thrilling fights all over the UK. Now in Belfast on Saturday night for the moment of his career as well. Jordan, welcome. Um, you've seen this man up close before. You've been part, of course, of, of Lee Wood's team in that tremendous fight. Really the moment of your career. Really nothing to lose. I know I put, you put the pressure on yourself, but the reality is... You know, it's the, the homecoming for Michael Conlon. Again, it's a new weight division. It's a new trainer. It's a new promotional team, new platform. And for you, you can just come and take it all and land yourself huge opportunities through victory on Saturday. Yeah, I feel great. There's no pressure on me at all. Um, 
and that's the way I'm looking at it. You know, it's a massive opportunity for me to put myself where I need to be, and I'm just buzzing, ready to go. I mean, I guess for everybody moving up a division, it's fight week's a little bit nicer, but we felt for a while that you needed to make that move from 26 to, to 130, and I guess tomorrow that's going to be a nicer place to be around midday. It's been a nicer place to be for the last six to eight weeks. It's, I mean, it's been happy, and uh, just feeling the benefits of it, and I'm uh, feeling strong, and I'm, I'm feeling great. So, yeah, tomorrow on the scales, I'm not going to look like a skeleton, uh, like I did at 26, and... You know, looking back, I probably should have moved up maybe three to four years ago. I guess one question here is how much more of, of both of you guys got to give the sport? You both feel that you've got a tremendous amount still to give on Saturday, but going to be a tough fight. You can both punch. You both have tremendous movement, got good boxing IQ as well. Should be a great fight to watch, but willing to go to the well if needed. Yeah, I mean, I always am. I, I think, you know... One fight that highlighted that I've got no quit in me is the Gurphy fight. And, you know, whether I have to do that again, I'm not sure, but we'll see. It's going to be a great fight. I think, you know, when he boxed Lee, it was fight of the year. And I'm expecting another one on Saturday. So I'm really excited, ready to go. And uh, all the pressure's on him. He's the star of the show. He, I'm just the opponent. Good time or bad time to fight Michael Conlon? Of course, uh, new trainer, new division, but coming off a, a tough knockout defeat as well. You're coming off the fight to Kiko Martinez as well a while ago, but you see holes in this man. You believe you can hurt him up at 130 pounds. There's only one way to find out, uh, and that's to fight on Saturday. I believe I can hurt him. Um, I believe I can you know, win this fight no, anyway. Michael, new surroundings for you in this training camp, Miami. Very nice to see the work with Pedro Diaz, tremendous trainer as well. A nicer place for you, up at 130 pounds. New chapter in a career, excited for a, a tremendous show on Saturday night. Yeah, thanks everybody for coming, first and foremost. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm in a great place mentally, physically, everything. You know, I'm in the best place I've been in a long time. I'm really excited about fighting it, rather than just being excited about it being over and, and having the win. I'm looking forward to the actual fight, and uh, I believe I'll go on Saturday night and put on a destructive performance. Is that a reflection of the new weight class particularly but found that uh, it's the easiest ever ever made weight so i can't say uh, even if i was probably if i really wanted to i could probably make 126 right now if, like if i wanted to push it but i don't need to and it's been nice it's been comfortable i've enjoyed the whole fight week it's been great um i'm excited to just go in and perform the man to my left really as i said nothing to lose but you expect to to be spiteful in there on saturday night you've, you've said in numerous interviews you win this fight by knockout. That's what you expect from, from a talented Jordan Gill, but you think you'll be too much for him. Yeah, listen, I know Jordan. I know he's a good fighter. Um, I know he has skills. He's, he's a smart boxer when he wants to be. And if you're not on your game, Jordan will beat you. Um, so I need to be on my game. But, you know, going to Miami, training with Pedro, I have a new lease of life. It's, I feel like I've just hit the reset button. And as we spoke about recently, he's not going to teach me anything new in eight weeks. He's just dusted me off and brought me back to doing what I do best. So that's what I'm excited about. I'm, I'm excited about the performance and, and putting in what we've been working on and, and things we've been doing in the gym, in the ring on fight night. It's going to be a great night. Um, I'm sitting here and I feel, I feel bad that Tyrone and Lewis are not made a event, really, <laughs> because that's an unbelievable fight. And, and when we done this show as Conlon Boxing before Matt Truman and the Zone came on board, that was the main event. I wasn't involved. And, you know, I feel like... It, a uh, bit of a dickhead, in a sense, you know, <laughs> coming in, because, you know, what a fight that is, and, uh, and I'm excited for both lads, and, you know, Ajarko and, uh, and Williamson as well, another fantastic fight. The whole card is, is great, and it's been a pleasure to, to work alongside Matron with Conlon Boxing and, and put it together. Absolutely, and I, I saw your post as well, of course, congratulating Katie Taylor last week. What a night. In Dublin you as well. Think you were going to cry in the I was, I was close. I, I would have yeah. watched it. I swore, I, yeah. I, and I, I loved it. I'll be yeah. honest. I'll give you credit because you showed real, true passion towards her, and it's deserved mm. because she is an unbelievable athlete, the, the greatest athlete from this island ever, no matter what. Uh, and that comeback, you know, no matter what, if the, if the knockdown is counted in the first round, she still wins by split decision. So it doesn't matter really, but. What a, what a performance. The best I've seen her boxing in a very long time. And uh, everybody did her. So 
that kind of solidified her, her position as the greatest athlete ever, in my opinion. And what we saw last week, of course, is what we'll see this Saturday as well. The atmosphere just on another level. And, you know, big wins for Irish boxers last week. Obviously, Gary Tully getting back on board. Paddy Donovan looks spectacular as well. I know Thomas Carty's still learning, but you talk about the fighters on this card as well. It's, it seems to be a, a real golden time for Irish boxing with Katie and yourself being able to headline in those, those big cards and draw big crowds, and the support's incredible. Well, now you have the north and south of the border. We can you know, bring it all together, the 32 county, and we'll do the big one, the Crow Park. And finally, as well, I know that they've got to take care of Jordan Gill on Saturday, but your ability to draw crowds, obviously home, away, New York, wherever it is, there's massive opportunities for you at 1.30. You, you must win this fight on Saturday. You do it in style. The future is huge for Michael Connor. Yeah, listen, I, I got to go in and take her Saturday night first. Um, you know, I have a live opponent who's who's fighting for his career in front of me, so there's nothing underestimated. Um, he's a good fighter, but I've got to go in and do it good on Saturday, and then we look forward. Oh, thank you, Michael. Thank you, Jordan. A tremendous fight card in Belfast on Saturday. Still buzzing from Dublin. I think you're going to see another historic atmosphere at the SSE Arena, live on the zone around the world. Of course, Ruan Farrell against Jared Hughes, Fergus Quinn as well, Cameron Vong, Lady Buttlejig as well. Look, look out for those guys on Before the Bell as we move on to four tremendous fights out here. Sean McComb um, against Sam Maxwell, Kevin Ajarko against Troy Williamson, Tyrone McKenna against Lewis Crocker, and of course the main event, the return of Michael Conlon against Jordan Gill up in the super featherweight division. Huge fights ahead for both. Thrilling night, live on the zone on Saturday. We'll see you for the weigh-in tomorrow, and we're going to face off the guys up here now. Thanks for coming today. Well, a quick break now, Darren. We, we break before we come together for the head-to-heads, which I think will be interesting. Yep. The press conference last week in Dublin was brilliant, and that was pretty fun as well. Yeah, it was really, really good. <laughs> I mean, I was buzzing for the show, but I'm even more excited now because... I don't know who set it up there. It must have been Eddie and one of the fighters as well. There's these real 50-50, genuine 50-50 fights. And there's, there's fights on there, I think certainly the top three, where where does the loser go? Where does the loser go? They've got aspirations to really push on and, and win major titles. A defeat to their opponent, it could could look like the end of their careers in boxing so when you put all of that in the pot you stir it they bring bring up brilliant fights well the name of the show is the get back and i guess what you're just saying there you know when you look across the card it's not just necessarily in that main event if but let's talk about the main event actually michael Conlon and jordan gill because if the fighters are to get back to world title contention neither of them can really afford a setback i don't think the loser has anywhere to go it's a long road back when you've experienced those highs that Jordan fight for the European title against a very good fighter, uh, Kiko Martinez. Um, yet yeah, it'd, be, it'd be hard to come back. This is a fiery fight. <laughs> the, uh, again, lively, lively little affair. Before the bell was absolutely brilliant in Dublin, I must say. And this one between Gerard Hughes and Ram Farrell. Well, listen in. We always say, though, Darren, it's just what we were talking about last week, the, the golden ticket and, and the young guns on Before the Bell in Dublin really, I think, it's safe to say, made the most of, of their opportunity. One of the best Before the Bells I've ever seen. And these two lads, what talent they are, what careers they've got in front of them. Real, real special fighters, level-headed lads with, yeah, the world at their feet. Third fight in eight weeks for Cameron Vong. Living the dream. <laughs> I mean, he says, the dream. he says he's built for this stage. Obviously, great team around him with Jamie and Nigel Travis, but just clearly, evidently loving what he is doing here on the big stage. And this is a, a really good fight as well. Sean McComb, Sam Maxwell, these two are stable mates in Glasgow, have roomed together, ate together, sparred many rounds. Apparently, the sparring was fantastic. You do get these stories in boxing, Darren, that unfold between friends, but that respect very much on hold on Saturday night. <laughs> Yeah, that would be a cracker. They know each other. Never got in there, though, with the 10-ounce the gloves on. So that, that could be the difference. But, yeah, really good fighters. And another one, where does the loser go? And the winner can push on. Well, he's had a good year, hasn't he? Yes. Sean McCombe, a really good 2023, linked up with Peter Taylor. But let's have a quick word on this one. Keevan Ajarko, Troy Williamson. This has been building up for some time now. And when I say, Darren, present me a 50-50 fight, what do you like about this one? <laughs> 
the fact that it's a 50-50 fight. <laughs> it's, it's a cracker. It, it really is. It really is. Has this come too soon for Kievan? Is Troy too experienced? Does he have that little bit extra when it gets hard and tough? Will that be the difference? We've no denying this man's talent. Very, very good fighter. But we've yet to see it at this level. What a fight this is. Yep, second fight for Kievan Ajarko. Obviously fighting now out of... The famous rotunda ABC, Joe McNally, Deco Rourke yep. in Liverpool. And just listening to him this week, he does seem to, to have a lot of self-belief. And that leads us in lovely to the Battle of Belfast, our chief support. Things starting to boil up nicely for this one. Tyrone McKenna, Lewis Crocker, sold over 500 tickets each. I think the atmosphere, safe to say, for this one is going to be incredible. <laughs> Fireworks. Cannot wait. Cannot wait for this. It, it, you know, similar, the experience of Tyrone McKenna been in there with top level opposition crocker kind of even though he's had 17 fights an unknown quantity massive punch up physically very strong will that be the difference or will it be the experience of mckenna I spoke to tyron mckenna yesterday and i said what is your final prediction what, what is the fight to, to the fans sell it to us and he went blood guts thunder it's gonna be a f <laughs> and he had to do everything he could to not swear very entertaining and here's your main event live on the zone on saturday night michael conlon new team out in miami as eddie was saying with Pedro Diaz. Feels like he loves the sport again. Jordan Gill very much coming to spoil the party and pursue big fights of his own up at 130 pounds. Wonder if there'll be any words exchanged here, Darren? I'm not sure. No, an awful lot of respect between the two of them, but this is a must win. A must win fight for both so they can push on, revive their careers and get back to to potentially challenge him for world titles. It, it's huge. It really is a massive, massive fight. Speaking to, to Mick and Jordan yesterday at the media day, and Mick, massive smile on his face, and he said, this is the best I've felt in a fight week with those extra four I'm pounds. Sorry, I'm just going to drop down and get the mic for Eddie. I, want, I wondered what on earth you were going to say there. <laughs> and here is promoter Eddie Hearn. Eddie, good to see you. I mean, we, me and Darren were just saying, the press conference in Dublin was brilliant and I'm not sure if it's just an Irish thing but yet again that was very entertaining wasn't it I think it's what we want isn't it I mean you know there's no harm in showing some emotion some fire some mind games a little bit as well and you know I think we saw a little bit of all of that today you know when you talk about Keevan Ajarko against Troy Williamson of course Troy's going to try and turn the screw and say you didn't want this fight he wants to mentally doubt him you know Lewis Crocker never really been tested never really been deep to the well Tyrone McKenna wants to put that fear into him, you know, and I think it's just a great card for tremendous fights along with plenty of other stuff. But those four championship fights, I love them all. Anything can happen in those fights. And, and it will be hard for, for the loser. I know we've got Crocker, relatively young, 17 and 0, he can come back. But at the end of the day, let's just have it right, yeah? The loser of Sean McComb against Maxwell might as well pack it in, <laughs> right? The loser of Michael Conlon against Jordan Gill might as well pack it in. The loser, like if Kevin Ajarko loses, horrendous for his career. If Troy Williamson loses, probably pack it in, right? If McKenna loses, where's he gonna go? Crocker, he's a young prospect. He loses, horrendous. Yeah. And that's what you want. You want the jeopardy of the big fights where it actually means a lot. It's career defining in a sense for a lot of these guys who are at different stages in their career. And you know, Jordan Gill has got nothing to lose. He can just go out there, box freely if he wins massive can fight Joe Caldina can fight Josh Warrington can fight all these big fights but Michael Conlon if he loses it is over because it could have been over after Lopez but you move up a division you find a new trainer you get a new lease of life okay it's part of the story and on the flip side as well the, the winner they're, they're all edging closer to that massive fight I mean the top of the bill he wants to be fighting like, look Jordan Gill never fought for a world title European title yes but lost to the, the great Spaniel Kiko Martinez but for Mike, uh, Michael Conlon he wants to be and, challenging and for world got, title we'll have 7,000 in there on Saturday you'll yeah. see the atmosphere they travel right they went to Nottingham they go to Madison Square Garden Michael Conlon can fight Lee Wood in a rematch. He can fight Joe Caldina for the world title. He can fight Josh Warrington. He can fight Navarrete. He can fight Oshaki Foster because he draws a gate. That's why Lopez flew all the way to Belfast because he's got the fan base to, to bring the champions there. So listen, if he looks sensational against Jordan Gill, Michael Connors flying. Mm. You know, he talked about the north and south there. We've got Katie Taylor, you know, down in Dublin. We've got Michael Connor in Belfast. I mean, Irish boxing could be 
flying. I mean, it's already flying after last Saturday, yeah, yeah. but this Saturday, you, know, you start looking at depth. You know, you could put something together at Croke Park, you know, with just a huge Mammoth. night for, for Irish boxing. And you saw a lot of Irish fighters win last week and try and cement their place on Croke Park as well. But I love this card top to bottom. You know, we've got four mad weeks coming up and, and this will be another wild one on Saturday. Last week, Eddie, we were talking about the pressure going back into the same environment for, for Gary Cully and for Katie Taylor as well. For Mick Conlon, no doubt, he'll be feeling the pressure after that defeat to Bernardo Lopez. But what you said up there, we, we used that question last week, good time or bad time to fight yeah. Mick Conlon. What's your opinion on that? I mean, you just don't know. Like, every knockout, like you saw last week, I mean, don't forget, when Conlon got knocked out to Lee Wood, he was out, right? It's very difficult to come back from a knockout like that. Last time, I know he, you know, eventually got up, but he was out. I mean, it was a clean knockout. So when you've been knocked out twice, you know, in the last four or five fights, and there have been bad knockouts as well, you just never know. That's the reality. But for Jordan Gill, you know, he took a beating off, off Kiko Martinez. We know it wasn't a clinical knockout, but it was a multi-knockdown stoppage where, you know, he was very brave in that fight. And also, don't forget the Karim Gurphy fight where he had a perforated eardrum. He, I think his leg had gone. And he basically had one chance, and that was to knock him clean out by sitting on the ropes, and he did it. Both guys have miles on the clock, and you never know when it's going to change. And for Jordan Gill, he punches... like what, The move to 130 is going to be so important for both guys. Like When I saw Jordan Gill make 26 against Kiko Martinez, you could just see he shouldn't be at 126 anymore. These guys have been at that weight class for so long. You look at Josh Warrington, another example. He's been at 126 pounds his whole career. How long's that career? 10 years? 12, like, you, you always see fighters, and I don't think Josh struggles that bad at the weight, but that, those extra pounds, you know, and that's why I think, again, you know, random to bring into the conversation, but Devin Haney, you know, you, see, you saw him vacate the belts last night. He's probably sitting there now thinking, Jesus, I could never go back to 35, so I might as well just get rid of him now. Those guys, when they weigh in tomorrow, will be thinking, 126. Yeah, Michael said, you know, I could still make 126 now. Rubbish. Once you make that move, you never go back. And you don't know how much they've been struggling over the years, and you don't know what difference it will make. Will it make a difference to their ability to take a shot? Will it make a difference to their engine? Probably both. Mm. But both guys can be hurt at any time in this fight. Cracking fight. And that's why I like it. Do you know what Jordan Gill's prediction was? I asked him yesterday and he said, do you know what I'm going to do? 11th round. Wasn't it? I'm going I'm to knock Mick out in the 11th round, lean over the ropes to my friend Lee Wood and say, what took you so long? <laughs> <laughs> but that, that, fair play if that happens. I, I was talking to Mick. He really wants to fight Lee Wood again. Yeah. And you can understand why he said he'd go to Nottingham for that rematch. But it just adds to the, the plot line, doesn't it? The yeah, story. But we, we need that kind of um, liquidity in the division where you can make massive fights. And look at all the potential matchups. You know, win or lose for both guys. You know, like Jordan Gill wins, you know, Josh Warrington in Leeds or Joe Caldina defence, obviously Mick Conlon. You know, we, we've said the names, plus the other champions as well. So you know, there's a great little quartet or more at 1.30 in the UK. And, and, you know, like I said, I think this comes down to how these guys are going to take it when they're hit on a chin. You know, and I think if, if Jordan Gill can take Michael Conlon's power, I think he's got a great chance in this fight. It's a big... big but, but I think... If he can't, then this fight's over inside six rounds. Big, uh, shout out to debutant East London's. Yeah, Lely. I mean, you know, I had people coming up to me before the press conference saying it's Laley Butterjig. 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 Butter and then Butter someone come up to me and said, no, it's Laley Butterjig. So at the end of the day, I just call him Ronaldo. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I mean, he looks, they look identical, you know. Um, no, no. Al Smith, Eddie Lamb, those guys in iBox who contacted me and said, we, feel, we think we've got something really special here. I mean, you saw last week with the professional debut of Giorgio Vizioli looked fantastic. Laley's 18, right? It's very, very young. I mean, already you see him sparring, you know, the big middleweights in the gym and, and looks very strong, very complete already at 18. This is a long apprenticeship now of two or three years of getting to 10 and 12 and 0. But I think you're really going to like what you see. This, this kid's got something special about him. He's won everything as an amateur. I mean, it's a bit like... When you leave school, do you go to university or do you go and get a job? And after three years in the job, look how far down the line you are versus when you come out of university. And those guys that don't go on to Team GB and don't go through the Olympics will now learn their trade, like I say, through the apprenticeship of boxing. And you do that, if you, once you have two four-rounders, five six-rounders, two eight-rounders, 
look at the position you're in for your yeah. career. I mean, look at Cameron Vong already. He's had three fights in eight weeks. Eight weeks. And really, we're, we're now looking at 2024 for him saying, 10 rounds won't be far. Area titles, no. English titles, you know, that's the speed he's going to be moving. So you never really know how quickly a fighter is going to progress until you see him in there. You know, same like Giorgio. Mm. Everyone gets carried away. First round knockout. Oh, he's good. Wow. You know, might be able to move him a little bit quicker. Or Laley comes out and looks really green on Saturday. Or looks really mature. And you look at him and say, actually, I this mean, kid's, yeah. you know, and it's very exciting. These are kind of like the most exciting times when you're promoting a fighter and guiding their career, their professional debut. Just want him to go in there, relax, do his thing. Imagine being an 18-year-old. You know, he's quite a shy kid. Great amateur pedigree, but then being told you're fighting in Belfast in front of 7,000. I mean, you're not at York Hall, you know, in front of all your mates. You're just, you know, you're on a flight. He's got his training team. I think they've got a fighter fighting tomorrow night. So some are here, some aren't. Mm. You know, what a great occasion for an 18-year-old. And, you know, I think it's great to give those fighters opportunities. You can't give them to everyone, but you also respect the opinion of certain people in boxing who say, you want to have a look at this kid, special talent. Eddie, really quick one. Did you go to university? No, but that's what I'm saying. The, the, the window cleaning. Go. Don't need one when you got a rich dad. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but but the thing is, when you're a silver spoon kid, you just go and do what you want. But what do you say? You turned it gold. The yeah, spoon. exactly. But on a serious note, when I finished college, I got into university, but I didn't go because I wanted to get a job instead. And my point, if you listen, Darren, what have you a, started here, Darren? Yeah, is about that apprenticeship period. When you come out of university at 21, really, you haven't got a clue, mm. right? If you go to work at 18, by the time you get to 21, you're thriving. You've had three years yeah, of experience yeah, yeah. in an industry, and that's the same as turning pro early. What would you prefer? You know, if, if I'm being asked a question, would you prefer a guy who's been, who, who at 18 went to Team GB and had four years at Team GB and won a European bronze or something like that, or would you rather get someone who is 20 or 18 and 0, who is 22, who has been through the whole experience, who has made the walk, who has boxed on big shows, there's nothing like getting that kind of experience. You can be a great amateur, but the learning that you will do in the pro game is the greatest apprenticeship, and, and that's the chance that he's got. He's going to fight six or seven times a year. You see all these guys, George Liddard, Jimmy Sainz, Giorgio, you know, Cameron Bong, Aaron Bone. Like, there's loads of them. Uh, Maisie Rose, Shannon Rock, like all the, the young fighters coming through, 3-0, 4-0, 5-0. -0. That's the most exciting period, because yeah. over the next year, we're going to really see the future crop of British boxing talent some will have it some won't but we get to see it close up you mentioned Devin Haney there Eddie just a quick one before we wrap up but what do you expect her to do because I saw the news about the WBO I think she has 10 days a couple of days ago that Katie, was yeah. to make a decision so what do you expect Katie to do now? yeah I mean firstly on Devin I really like the move I mean one it shows immense confidence going into next week because if he loses against Regis Progre he has no belts he could have held those belts if he lost last week he's still yeah. the unified world champion at lightweight so, and how good to give other fighters the opportunity. Some people just hold on to it for spite. No, no, don't let it go. I don't want him to get a shot. Where Devin just went, good luck, lads. I'm actually staying up here now, so relinquish. And, and you know, that's, that could be a good move or bad news. We'll find out about midnight next Saturday in San Francisco. For Katie, quite a tough decision, really, because, you know, 135 is definitely her weight. If she's going to fight Chantel in a trilogy, could that be at 35? My gut feeling is she'll hold on to the belts at 35 because that is her weight class. She's not really, she eats her way up to 140 and can't even really get there even when she does. But the trilogy is the fight. Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah. I, I think Chantel would have no problem making 35. She said in the run up to this fight that she's happy to fight at 135. For her, she would have the chance to become a two, two weight undisputed champion as well by beating Katie Taylor in a trilogy and of course you've got the Amanda Serrano fight as well which wouldn't be at 140 it would be at 135 so got to talk internally to Brian Peters and Katie and Ross and the team but my gut feeling is she'll keep the belts at 135 Eddie Hearn thanks for joining us so much to look forward to on Saturday night live on The Zone and so much to look forward to coming up as well talking of Devin Haney how about this for an unrivaled December schedule Haney Progray as Eddie was saying there next Saturday from the West Coast San Francisco WBC 140 pound title on the line in that one before Jake Paul returns Friday December 15th then the small matter of Sonny Edwards and Bam Rodriguez the flyweight unification Saturday December 16th before Joshua Wilding Wilder Parker what a night the day of reckoning soon coming Saturday December 23rd live from Saudi 
Arabia. What a schedule. Jeez. What a schedule. <laughs> but look, Ain't a bad December, is it? Not bad, not bad. But we were just saying there, though, we said this to Eddie, didn't we, last week, that the more you progress into these fight weeks and you hear the fighters speak... Did you speak, go uni? Uni, I did, yeah. You did go uni. Mm. Right. I've only, my only other job was Tesco, though. Is it? And your tea boy And my tea boy I think that you is... Now. The, that you is now the, flourishing. I'm proud, proud of him. Stop it. But we, we were saying, you know, last week the anticipation builds and builds and builds each day. And I think that's what's so special about these fight weeks. But listening to the fighters up there, it's safe to say the excitement's certainly building. Yeah, because it, it's so important. It's so important. Uh, a win here just catapults them into these massive mammoth shows, continuing uh, on, on the journey where they want to be. Uh, a defeat is just so, yeah, potentially career ended certainly in the main event no doubt about it so yeah it's just it's a must win it's must win when the bell goes you're just going to see that Saturday night do not miss it it's going to be you know entertainment like you you know you can only dream of so it's not to be missed just finally Darren you are doing live face-offs with the top three fights a little bit later on today so keep your eyes on peeled on that one Matram and his own socials the top three fights, you're going to be the man in the middle. Excited? Nervous? Bit of both? If it kicks off, I've had it. Because I'm, I'm a soft now. I'm a soft 41-year-old. I, like, I can barely lift up. He's not lying. My, my kids anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But I am. I am. You, you heard it there. They're, it's, it's, it's a funny sort of time to do face-offs because they're raring to go. Yeah. They're raring to go. Weight starting, my, weight starting exactly. to come down. It's, it's weigh-in day tomorrow, so they'll be very tight on the weight. Um, it only takes a little comment here, there, and it all kicks off, and you just see me run uh, for my life. We'll get you some security. Cheers, mate. Don't worry, but keep an eye out for Face Off Live with Darren Barker and the top three fights coming out a little later on today. That was the press conference. That was fun. Fight week very much underway here in Belfast as we count down to a terrific night on design. We'll be back for the weigh-in same time, 1 p.m. tomorrow from here in the Europa Hotel. If you're in the area, pop down. I'm sure the atmosphere will be equally as incredible as it will be on Saturday night. We can't wait. We'll see you tomorrow afternoon. Fight fans, this winter, your December is on the zone. Last month saw our undisputed titans go to war, but the fights never stop on the zone. Unleash an unrivaled December with unmissable returning fighters. Unreal two-division type of contenders. Unstoppable global superstars and undefeated championship showdowns. The arrival schedule. Only on the zone. Don't miss it. Sign up now at DAZN.com.